Hello and welcome everyone to ArcGIS Pro, a gentle introduction and you can see we have it now here. After some introductional videos to ArcGIS Online, we will start today with ArcGIS Pro. And what we will learn in this session is, of course, we will import some older documents from ArcGIS desktop. So we will deal with an MXD file. We will have a look on folder connections. We will take a closer look to the whole inter interface. So what you can expect if you're working with ArcGIS Pro, we will explore, modify and um, save map. Of course, we'll have a look on contextual ribbons that are part of ArcGIS Pro and we'll have a look on features and attributes as we have did in ArcGIS Online. So stay tuned and follow me. But before we will really start with a new project or with an imported project, let's have a look on uh, a closer look on the interface as well. So you can see here ArcGIS Pro. Uh, there are some templates you can work with right from the start. And as you can see, I'm already online here, so I'm connected to my organization. We will start with an out a template just to give you a brief insight into how ArcGIS Pro is structured and how you can work with all the different windows. When we are looking at ArcGIS Pro, you can see in the upper left corner some um, ribbon toolbars or ribbon tabs they are called. So there's a tab for map, insert, analysis. This looks quite familiar, familiar already to the uh, office user. So we have those ribbons and um, now it's taking some time because it's building up a geo processing cache in the background. But still, let's wait a minute. Now the cache is already built. So there are some uh, different toolbars here. So we have one for the view and edit toolbar with the, the different ribbons. And then you can see some little windows on the right. We see the catalog that is familiar to the ArcGIS user already. And we have the contents pane. And you can see these are yeah, you can drag them everywhere you would like. So I think that feature was already there in ArcGIS uh, Desktop or ArcMap. So let's move this over to uh, to this pane here. And so you can see that now I have both tools and both menus on one side. You can make them sticky or you can hide them and uh, by using this little push pin here. So let's move the contents over there. But the catalog, I would like to have the catalog on the right side again. But as mentioned, contents over there. So when we are looking here on the different tools, as, it, as there are some groups and then there are contextual tools. So when we are adding a map here, then we will have, of course, some different content in the map. We will have rustlers, we will have features, we will have attributes and so on, annotations, labels, and different services um, embedded in our map. And depending on the, on the tool and on the layer, on the content, you will have some contextual ribbons here as well. So there will be maybe a new group here for, the, for dealing with the raster, right? So, but first of all, let's import an MXD by going on insert and say import map. I'm using the map that comes with the um, tutorial data for getting to know ArcGIS Pro. So let's open up the world data MXD. This will take some time. And so there it is. We have one tab and that is, this is new to ArcGIS Pro. So there's no dealing around with different programs. So you need to start ArcMap again and ArcMap again. Um, you can now have different projects in one application here. So if we if we would add a new map, so maybe let's try the, the same map again. We'll have a new tab with new content pane. And so you can work with that quite easily in one application. And when we have imported the map, uh, you might have seen that there is still a project folder, right? And there are some other items here as well for the computer. But how can you 
connect to a folder. And you might remember this from ArcGIS Desktop. That was quite a big change for my, for me personally, to have that whole, I need to connect to a folder and I don't have the real deal like normal Explorer window where I can just select my file and I would like to add it. So let's have a folder connection here and let's connect to the, um, get into the ArcGIS Pro folder. So let's have a look here on the on the map. Let's add some data and now I can see that I still have here a shortcut to my folder. So I have added a new folder connection. You can see the same thing here in folders on the right side in my catalog. So I have here uh, some sort of temporary folder and I have here the GTK AG Pro folder with the data that I'm currently seeing on the map. So now let's play around a little bit with the map content itself. So we can see that this is a map consisting of different um, items. So we have one layer for cities with population values in a categorized way. Then we have that long um, critical um, grid on, on the page. We have a quite simple countries layer then we have some world population layer and an air pollution by country layer and if we are interested in where is the pollution highest we might first of all check this layer now nothing has changed why is that of course be we have still the layer concept so every layer is on top of each other and we are we need to hide the countries layer first of all so they are now the different items we can see some gray red green colors and so on let's turn off the cities layer as well and um yeah so let's have a look here on the on the little long we will move this somewhere else so let's move this down below and now we have the countries and we have the criticals might not be pleasing to everyone but what are the values representing, right? So let's have a look. Let's click on this little triangle here. And now we can see that there are some urban PM concentration values. And the highest values are in the Zyl zone. So center, Sahara, center, central Sahara, southern edge of the Sahara. Then we have Iraq and Pakistan with highest values in the PM concentration. We have still some no data values like I think this is Libya, Greenland, and um, some African country here, Romania, where we don't see the current values. Let's have a look on the other layers that are part of the project. This is world population. Let's turn this on and let's turn on the cities as well. Now you can see there's some clustering in the, in the East, East, East Asia. So where are the cities? Therefore, we need to pan zoom and um, move the map content therefore there's the explore tool here so there's a little help over there uh, but to be quite honest it's drag and drop or drag with uh, pressing the left mouse and just panning where you would like to center the map then you have the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out and let's have a look here and of course if you're just simply clicking somewhere you will get a layer and you will get a pop-up for that item. In this time, in this um, example, I've clicked on a city. Um, I'm getting the values of cities, just one result. This is called Xi'an. And let's have a look here on the population value. The population is uh, 3,225,000. Let's click somewhere else. Let's click there. That's just world population. So I have a context specific information window and that's quite cool so you don't need to deal around okay what layer would i like to query you get you press somewhere and it, it it selects intelligently which layer you might be interested in right so i'm clicking here on that it was quite near i only get the visibility so if i'm clicking to the right you can see that i only get the world population data here and the pop-up for this so there's no city layer um, visible or city pop-up visible to me now let's get let's go back to the full content of the map first of all you can 
right click on any layer and go to zoom to layer this will zoom to the specific uh, extent of the layer but now you can see there are still some areas missing here in Alaska so we can also select this little globe tool full extent it is already highlighted there and we are back in the game so let's um, we have this layer selected already you can see now that there is this contextual ribbon called feature layer so if I just click on layers this is highlighted no contextual ribbon is there click on cities and you can see that we have appearance labeling and data data comes into handy right because we all want to see what data is behind the data set as well we have an insight already because we can use the pop-up function but if the map creator hided some uh, pop-up items so some attributes we will not see it in the pop-up so let's open up the attribute table this goes up or this opens up here in the bottom extend it a little bit of course we can uh, we can sort by different attributes so we can sort by pop rank right click sort scanning sort scanning uh, we can right click here on population we will get the biggest cities how can we select them click on the first uh, on this first item if you would like to select multiples just hold down the control button and now we can see the, where are the five biggest cities in the world once we are having the selection already there there's also a possibility or the option to zoom to the current selection so there's different as well a contextual ribbon right so we have the clipboard we can copy paste the items we have a row currently row Buenos Aires I can pan to this row and if I have multiple items selected so let's select these three um, and I'm going back to the zoom to I will zoom to Shanghai right and uh, I will zoom to different items here so let's select the five biggest city once again and of course we are dealing with the selection and I can choose to pan to or to zoom to the selection so the extent of the map will be adjusted we have some different tools we will deal with them maybe later on so the export features export table calculate fields some of them if you are familiar with ArcGIS desktop or ArcMap you might remember those terms already so um, you can play around export the data in the table but uh, now you can we will clear this one and let's have a look here on the right click and uh, not on the right click but uh, this is Papua Neu Guinea New Guinea um, what we can do as well we can select the data so let's go to map select and select this field and now we can also work with this item we can for example choose to see the attributes of the current selection and once again let's have a look here on that uh, tool so let's click here and select you can also select multiple items by just drag dropping um, this here uh, for the extent you might be interested in so this is quite a cool tool um, there are different ways of doing this and um, that's it for the moment so we what we have learned of course we have played around with the map a little bit so we have reordered the map we have selected we had to look on different attributes inside the pop-up and inside the attribute table we have ordered zoomed panned inside the map if there is anything unclear just drop a comment down below otherwise subscribe take care and goodbye